Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity Church of Jesus Christ. Praise and worship service today. Um, today, we just want to welcome you into the house of the Lord as we sing praises to our Lord. We thank God for turning our morning into dancing, and we thank God for breathing on us. So as we sing these two songs, we ask and pray that you would worship with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Your holy presence. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Your holy presence. Living in me. Living in me. This is my daily bread. Lord, this is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me. Spoken to me. And all.
lost without you. My God. And I. This is the air I breathe. Lord, you're the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. You're holy. Your holy presence. Living in me. Living. Thank you, Jesus. This is my daily bread. Oh Lord, you're my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Your very, your very word. for you and Lord I'm lost and I, without your love and arms without your hands and protection God I'm, I'm lost, lost without, without you I'm desperate for you I'm desperate for you and I I can't stay silent. I can't stay silent. I 
turn my morning, yes. You turn my morning into dancing. Into dancing he lifted, you lifted my soul. I can't stay silent. I can't stay silent. I must. I will sing for your joy has come. I will sing. I will sing for your joy has come. One more time, I, I will. Once again, welcome to our pre-recorded church service from Unity Church of Jesus Christ, where Harold McKenzie serves as our senior pastor. We're glad you could join us. Please stay tuned after these announcements to hear what God has laid on Pastor's heart. Join us every Wednesday evening at 6.30 on Unity's Facebook page for The Encounter. It's a video streaming event on Facebook Live. It's a time of praise, worship, and prayer where believers come together to get into the presence of God. We look forward to connecting with you on social media. On YouTube, search for Unity Church of Jesus Christ. Subscribe and get reminders of our sermons and live streams. Also, look for Unity Church on Facebook. Friend us to get notifications of our encounter services every Wednesday. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at UCJCNPA. You can keep up with your giving by going online via postal mail. Please go to UCJC.org and click on online giving at UCJC. Have your credit, debit card, or ACH bank account information ready. Mail your tithes and offerings directly to Unity Church of Jesus Christ at 2280 Commercial Boulevard, State College, PA, 16801. Please write Attention Treasurer. Feel free to contact us for prayer or any other matter by using the form located at the bottom of our homepage. There you can list all important information, request someone from our prayer team, or office get in touch with you, or if you wish, submit your request anonymously. Thank you for listening to these announcements. My name is Morgan. Please join me and the rest of our congregation as we present Senior Pastor Harold McKenzie with today's message. Hello, Unity family and all of you who are joining us for our service this morning. It's a blessing to have you here with us. Uh, Before I get started into our sermon today, just want to take a moment and try to bring some clarity to uh, our topical study, Fight Like a Christian. Uh, To be honest with you, this did not start off as a topical study. It started off more as a sermon series uh, on what it takes for us to fight like Christians. Uh, But very early on, within the first few weeks of the series, Holy Spirit began to explode in my heart the key principles that are needed for everyday life in our spiritual warfare against the enemy. And I realized that this was going to be more than a sermon series, but a a topical study that within it has 
series of sermons. Uh, the problem is, is I don't know that I made that very clear to all of you. And so it may, uh, more than a topical study, it may seem like the sermon series that will never end. And I apologize for that. Uh, it is a topical study. And within this study, uh, we have series of sermons, like uh, the early on, the revelation, uh, embracing the revelation of victory. And then most recently, armor up, fight like, I mean, armor up, um, get dressed for battle. And each of those are a series of lessons within the topical study. Again, I hope I can, I've brought a little bit more clarity. My apology uh, and any uh, confusion I've caused you. Uh, but I really do believe that this topical study, if you apply the principles of the lessons that have been taught within it to your daily living, you will experience on a daily basis victory against every force of hell, whether it be in the personal life, uh, in family, or whether it be out in the community, such larger things as systemic racism, the power of God will be shown mightily through your life. Let's get into our, our study for today. Will you bow your heads for me, with me? Lord Jesus, again, I pray that, uh, we're, that there will be clarity and that as I share today, uh, I just yield myself to you. Help me to glorify you. Open our ears and our hearts to receive. I pray that we are strengthened through what is shared this day. I ask in Jesus' name. Last week, we finished uh, the lessons we were doing within this topical study on the armor of God. And we have somewhat of a summary review of those six weeks where we talked about that topic. Now today, what I want to do is look ahead and then start with today's sermon. Looking ahead, there are a couple areas that we're going to cover as we're kind of wrapping up this topical study. One, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about praise, and prayer and praise uh, in our fight against the enemy. And I think you're going to see that prayer and praise play, play, play a vital role as we stand in the victory Jesus has given us. But also there at the end, we're going to talk about uh, the lessons gifted for battle. And I'll share more when that time comes about that particular set of lessons. Today, I want to talk to you about a very important topic, obedience. Now, I want you to follow along with me. We're going to read a couple scriptures as we enter into this uh, lesson today. Luke chapter 22 verses 41 through 44. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and began to pray saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently. And his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself be, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee will bow of those things which are in heaven and on the earth 
and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We need to take a moment and look at the impact of Jesus' obedience. Obedience that took him to death on our behalf. And as we look, paraphrasing Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, that act of obedience to our Heavenly Father God caused him to give us total victory over the works of the enemy, over Satan himself. As we look at that passage of Scripture 9 through 11 in chapter 2, he's, because of his act of obedience, he was given authority in heaven. As we know, and we've read before in Ephesians chapter 1, that our Heavenly Father raised him up and seated him at his right hand far above all things in, in giving him glory in heaven, but also giving him authority over everything in the earth. That at the name of Jesus, governments have to come in the line. At the name of Jesus, everything that is in the natural realm is in obedience to his name. But also, beloved, as we look at our warfare, he gave him authority over every principality, every ruler of the demonic realm. He gave, because of his obedience, he received that authority. And I want us to understand something, because uh, we need to know that Jesus the man did this. Now, why am I sharing that with you? Because very often when we look at what Jesus has done, we think of God, Jesus. But we need to understand that Jesus, and we, we kind of say to ourselves, well, you know, well, that was Jesus. We, we expected him to do that. He is God right there. He's a part of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, I mean, because he was God, then he, we expected him to be able to do that. But, beloved, it is so important that you understand that Jesus stripped himself. He laid aside. He was born as a human being, just like you and me. Everything we talked about he, that he has done, he did it as a human being, not as God. We read in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ. Christ Jesus, the only way he could be our mediator, the spotless lamb, he had to come to earth and do what Adam as a man could not do. And beloved, he did that. It's hard to fathom the pressure that he was under on a daily basis. And then at this final time in prayer, the act of obedience, but he did it on yours and my behalf. He did it today for you. He did it those years ago for you. It goes on in Hebrews 4, 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, that is, fully understand our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are. Whatever you're struggling with today, Jesus went through it so that you could have victory. Amen. Yet, the Bible says in Hebrews 4.15, without sin. So his obedience translates to our victory. Praise be the name of the Lord. He, is, he became our way maker and as we've talked before, he came to earth to defeat Satan on our behalf, and he did that. 
He lived the life. He, we talk about his finished work, and you need to rejoice in the fact today that in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you have. What he did has given you victory today. He is our way maker. Amen. He is our way maker. But not only as we're going to look at this topic of obedience today, is he our way maker, we also need to understand he is the example. He lived a life that showed us how to live through the grace and power of Holy Spirit. Beloved, right there in your living room, through the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is showing you how you can live victoriously. Amen. So, but the key is that we see ourselves as obedient warriors. Obedient warriors, what does that mean? Well, I want you to understand that the key to us living in the victory that Jesus purchased for us, the key for you living in that victory on a day-to-day -day basis is being intentional about obedience. What I mean is, what I mean by that is, is that you need to be intentional about, intentional about the fact that by the grace of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you are going to live a life that is marked by obedience to the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean because we understand we need grace. Doesn't mean that you're going to be that I am perfect. But you can be intentional about God's helping you and about obeying what he's asking. You're, our key to living in, in victory is hinged on our obedience. Amen. Now, what does this look like? What does obedience look like for us? Well, first of all, and again, even looking at what our Lord Jesus' is example, obedience, beloved, means total surrender. Just like Jesus did with his life. Obedience for the Christian warrior is total surrender. There is one commander and one Lord. That is Jesus. And we have to understand that we have to position ourselves to be surrendered to him. And through him, surrender to our heavenly father, God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. And it brings this home to us. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Now, get this, whom you have from God and that you are not your own. I don't belong, I've been purchased. Revelations 5, 9. Our Lord Jesus has purchased men for God from every nation. And so we see here, for, for you have been bought with a price, it goes on to say, Therefore, glorify God with your body. Total surrender means you and me recognizing that we are not our own, that we have a commander in chief. There is a commander of the, the army of beloved. That commander of the army is our victorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in that context, if you're following along in your outline, you'll see, and I, I wrote there, that that means there are no renegade warriors. Did you hear me? You know, very often you, you, we see in, in, the, in the world's view, uh, whether it be in an army and those, and those things, you have those incidences where the commander who, who he issues a, war, uh, a, 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 a command, he issues an order, and there's a soldier who feels like, well, I don't agree with that order. I feel like we ought to do it this way. I feel I, I, I'm not liking the direction the commander's taking. And we see those incidences. Uh, where that soldier goes off and he kind of goes and disobeys the order and very often, and you see it sometimes in films, he goes and he disobeys the orders of the commander and it all works out because the commanders, the way the commander wanted to do it was wrong. Well, let me let you understand something today, beloved. That's not the way it works in the army of God. 
It, there, there, is one, there is one Lord, and he is Jesus. He is God, and I am not. He is God, and you are not. And if we're going to live victoriously, we have to understand that we have to embrace surrender, that the kind of surrender that will lead us to obedience. Remember, as I've said to you before, one of Satan's strategies and schemes and he and the forces of hell is to convince you to go with them. And when we act in volitional disobedience, that's what we end up doing. We play into their hands, into their schemes. So again, we need to humble ourselves and say, and this is what our, our Lord did, again, as our example let, Lord, yet not my will, Father, but your will. And so we're saying we humble ourselves before you, not my will, O oh God, but your will be done. So how do we get to the place of total surrender? Well, we get to the place of total surrender through, you get to that place, beloved, through faith and trust. We have to understand that it's hard to obey God just out of just sheer obedience. Faith and trust right now within the midst of the circumstances that you may be facing. Faith and trust are key to your obedience. We look at faith, we're talking about believing in the integrity of who Jesus and Father God say they are. We talked, again, as we talked about the armor before, we said the whole thing, all the armor, but basically all our victory hinges on the integrity of Jesus being who he says he is. And one of the things that our adversary tries to do, he tries to challenge, right? He tries to challenge the integrity of Jesus Christ and what he has done. Right now, as you are facing the circumstances that you are maybe dealing with, as you hear my voice this morning, you may be dealing with overwhelming fear. We looked at, we look at the opening of the university in our area, State College. We look at the um, opening of our schools and all the confusion and uh, the, the sense of fear that is surrounding them. And that fear raises the question, can Jesus really protect me? Uh, maybe you are in a, you're feeling like, does, does God, does Jesus really love me? Can he really do, and as we continue to wrestle with the issues of systemic racism, and we have no, more things that cause us uh, heartbreak, like the recent, most recent shootings, and we say, Lord, is your power greater than the power of the sin of racism? Well, faith in him says, yes, my God is greater. My God is higher. And I choose to believe you right there, where you are with your situation. Maybe, again, you're sending your, kids, your children off to school, and it's just turmoil. And, and, you know, the sense, that feeling of what's going to happen. How is it going to work? I mean, are the ideas that they've put in place, it, it seems like they're just shooting in the dark, even though we know they're trying to do the best they can. And you're saying, God, I just doesn't know how, I don't know how this is going to work out. But you can say at the end of this, I choose to believe you. If you're sick in your body, I choose to believe you, that you are who you say you are. You've done everything you said you would do, and that all pertains to me. But also we have to understand the value of trust. Faith and trust go together. Trusting Jesus more than your own understanding. Are you hearing me? You see, because what God asks us to do and the time that we are standing and we're doing our battle, it doesn't just, it doesn't make sense. Satan intends for things not to make sense in your natural mind. 
you may be facing personal mountains. And as you're facing those personal mountains, the, it just doesn't add, life is not adding up. So, but God is saying obedience to him is not based on our understanding. Obedience, beloved, is not based on me agreeing with God's plan. The plan of God that is in front of you right now, as we talk about principles that lead to total victory and help us to stand victoriously as we fight like Christians, some of those things that God, the world's way, Satan intends for you to think the world's way makes more sense. It makes more sense than God's plan. But trusting him, says God, right now, our community is being impacted. Football, college football, is a major part of what happens here in State College in this center region. And you can just imagine the millions of dollars that the university is losing, but also the community is losing. And that may be impacting you directly. And you're saying, Lord, I'm not sure where my provision is coming from. And you're telling me to take a stand in, and trust you. It may be that God is, is telling you to take a step and you've got financial needs and the Holy Spirit is taking, telling you to plant a seed of faith and to give some of what you do have. And you're saying, Lord, that doesn't make sense. I'm looking ahead, and that, you know, the prospect of what my finances are going to look like over the next couple months, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you that your way of dealing with systemic racism, that your way of dealing with fear, that your way of dealing with a family issue that I'm, that I'm facing right now is the best way I trust you. Let me read you a scripture that kind of that, that speaks to this. Proverbs 3 verse 5 in the Amplified Classic version. Here's what we are instructed to do. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight and understanding. And that's the kind of trust. I'm not going to lean on what I'm feeling about this. Even I'm not going to let the dictates of my emotions, you know, my soul, I'm not going to let the dictates of my emotions, my soul, my thought life and all of that dictate whether I'm going to obey you. I'm going to trust or whether I'm going to trust you. Now let's keep building. And so we see that if we're going to walk in obedience, surrender is important. But in order to surrender, for you to be able to surrender your life to God, you've got to, be, uh, you've got to have faith. You've got to believe in him and who he is, but you've also got to trust him. Now, how do we get to the place of faith and trust? Yes, you can just volitionally faith and trust, but can I give you this last bedrock principle that will help you trust and believe the Lord? This is the key right here. I mean, you could just, like a robot, just wrote obey. But I know there are times in the battle, if, if, if this principle is not a part of your life, it's going to be really extra hard. And as we see our Lord Jesus' life, you see that what I'm going to share with you now was the key to him being able to surrender, have faith in his heavenly father, and trust his heavenly father for the outcome that would be needed, that would be bringing victory. And that principle is relationship. That's right, beloved. It's relationship. Knowing Jesus and his heart for you. That is paramount. So often, listen, I'm talking about more than being a Christian and being on your way to heaven. That is a blessing. But you can be on your way to heaven 
and only know what your God can do for you. You can be on your way to heaven and barely get to know him. And I will tell you, in crunch time, if you don't know him, if the only thing you know, beloved, right now, again, I mentioned earlier, economic crunch. And and, and, and if things are tough, or, or just God asking you to do something that's extremely hard for you to do, if you don't know him relationally, It's going to be hard for you to trust him. It's going to be hard for you to believe him. Then that means it's going to be hard for you to totally surrender and obey. And so I key the relationship, getting to know him, not just what he does. Taking the time in personal prayer, saying, God, I want to know you. Taking the time in the word. God, I want you to show me yourself, not just what you do. I want to know through, and and I wanted to know it by experience in my daily walk, but also in, by revelation of the Holy Spirit, I want you to anchor me in a passionate, personal relationship with you. That's what God, that's the whole deal, beloved. That's the whole thing that God wants you to know him. He's not just interested in you being saved, and he's interested in more than your victory over the enemy. He wants you to know him personally and intimately. I want to share a couple of scriptures uh, with you that speak to this, because I want to, I hope that this will set your heart on a journey to pursue God in an intimate, personal way. As you pursue him, he's right there that you, he can reveal himself to you. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. Oh, God, you get the heart of this in the Amplified Classic Version. Oh, God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you, not for your stuff, I want you. Are you hearing me? I want to know you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because... Your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. A scripture I've also shared with you a great deal is in Psalm 27, verses 4 and 8. But it is, David is writing there as he wrote here, Lord, I want you. I need to behold you, to know you, to know your ways. When you do that, what you begin to find out, you get the revelation of how much God loves you. You get the revelation of his heart and his mind. And then, as in a time like this, you know, in the days that we are living in, it seems like everything that can be shaken is being shaken in your own home and personal life. It may seem like everything that can be shaken is being shaken. As you send your school children out to school each day, as you maybe are going to work at the university, it seems like the ground is shaking. But beloved, when you know who your captain is, not just what your captain does, when you know what your captain, your captain's heart towards you, that he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. That I will always be there, even when you are going. Again, I've quoted John 16, 33 so many times. But did you, he said, I want you to know, even though you're going through struggles right now, even though it's hard, even though it's frustrating, even though you, your emotions may be going all over the place, you can obey me because I've got your best interest in mind. And I have the best plan. I want to, as I'm closing up today, I want to give you an example of what 
it, when you come to that place of relationship, what, ro- what relationship will cause you to do? And that example is found uh, in the second chapter. I'm going to paraphrase it. The second chapter of Samuel. Uh, I'm sorry, the second book. Second Samuel 23. Second Samuel chapter 23, verses 15 through and 16. And David, who was on, in exile, was on the run. And as David is on the run, he's outside of the encampment of the Philistines, uh, outside of Bethlehem. And he longs so much to be at home. And he's just musing in his longing in the brokenness of his heart. And he says this, oh, that I could just get a drink of water from the well in, the city, in Bethlehem. And he had a group of men who loved him so much. It did not make a bit of sense to go down into that encampment and fight. Those, they had three men, they went down, they went to the well, and then they encountered Philistine soldiers. They fought them off. They fought them off and got some, a cup of water to bring back to David. That, because they loved him so much. They knew his heart for them. And this, his heart for them caused a love that caused them to hazard their life. When they brought that cup back to David, he was so astounded. He says, I, I can't drink this. How can I drink this, this water that these men hazarded, even to the point of blood, which says to me that they probably had some wounds as a result of doing that. They hazarded themselves. That's the kind of relationship, the understanding of God's heart to the point that you say, Lord, I'm going to give you obedience, reckless abandon. I don't may not understand it. It may not be convenient. But when it comes to the strategies of war, I'm going to trust you because I know you. And so I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. Yet your will, not mine. So as we do that, beloved, the discipline of obedience becomes a part of our lives. That's right, the discipline of obedience. I want to give you a one, and you understand, the discipline of obedience leads to victory. Satan has a hard time. He can't defeat obedient people because you give him nothing to work with. In in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 38, talking about Philip, and the Lord tells him to do something. He says, Philip, I want you to go. Uh, down, and I want you just to go to an area outside of Jerusalem, a little ways outside of Jerusalem. I think it was Gaza. And he said, just, I want you to hang out there. Okay? So he goes there. And he sees a man, and God says, over there, there's an Ethiopian eunuch. And I want you to go, just go near where he is. Now, he doesn't know this man. He has no reason to connect to him. But he, again, obeys obeys God in something where he doesn't know where his obedience is leading. It's not comfortable. But he goes there, and beloved, as he goes there, he begins, now it begins to unfold. And he hears this man who happened to be the treasurer, the head of the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia. And he hears him. And then now God says, join yourself to him. Go over there where he is. And he hears him. He begins to listen to him. And he listens to the man he, uh, who's searching for God. He, th- there was a divine appointment for strategic victory of salvation that was in the balance. And this Ethiopian eunuch comes to God. And then the Lord translates to uh, Philip to somewhere, and he never sees that man again. But guess what? He goes back to his country. Do you see the strategic power of obedience in warfare? He goes, he was, God sent him contending for a soul against the enemy. And this man goes back to Ethiopia, and he I have no doubt that he brings the gospel back to his queen. He brings the gospel back to the place, to Ethiopia. A strategic moment of obedience. 
Maybe God has been asking you to do something that doesn't make sense. I know of people that, that, that we've counseled at times and we said, here's what God is saying to do. And it was key to their victory. Things that God has told me to do that didn't make sense, that didn't feel comfortable. Obedience is a key. And so I want to encourage you today as I close to embrace obedience. Our Lord Jesus gave us victory through his obedience. And now, beloved, as we look to stand in our battle against the forces of hell, you in this period of time of difficulty in your life, where you're facing mountains, you're facing the giants of racism, you're facing the giants of, of, of this disease and the giants that have all the ripple impact of all these things, personal context of just having been quarantined all these times. God says, if you will obey him, you will see victory after victory after victory after victory. Because obedience lines us up with what Jesus has done for us. And when we are lined up with what Jesus has done for us, we can not lose. You can not lose. Not based on your feelings. Not based on your understanding. But out of your relationship with him, obey him. Yet not your will, my will, but your will be done, oh God, in Jesus' name. God bless you today. God bless you today. Purpose in your heart, you're going to obey. What is God telling, what has he told you to do? Do it. Father, help us. Help us. You got the plan. You, Father, Lord Jesus, Father, and Lord Jesus, you guys have the plan. Your plan will not fail. Help that brother or sister who's viewing me right now. You Help them to just grab hold of the plan and say, God, I will obey you because I'm seeing your heart for me. I trust you. I believe you. I surrender to you. Thank you for that. I thank you for helping us. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to be intentional about obedience by your grace. In Jesus' name. Now, if you are listening and you're not a Christian, that's okay. Because there is a, a way out for you. And that way is Jesus. That way is Jesus. He loves you. Now, your first act of obedience that leads to salvation is to surrender your life. He's saying, you who are listening to me, who are not in a saved relationship with him, surrender your life to me. You do that by saying, Jesus, I give my life to you. Would you say that? I ask you, to be my Lord and Savior. Would you say that? Forgive me of my sins. And as you have done that, Jesus, his spirit has come into your life. And he wants to teach you how to live for him and how to live a life of victory, the victory he has purchased for you. Go to our website. And there you can find information as you scroll down to fill out. You can do it anonymously or leave us your name. But we want to teach you how the, the next step of this glorious walk with him. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. Obedience equals victory. Obedience equals victory. God bless you. We thank you for joining us today. Be sure to join us for our encounter service every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We look forward to worshiping with you again real soon. Have a blessed week.